Right from the beginning, when a child is diagnosed with a hearing loss, one of the biggest misconceptions that we have among parents and among the general public is that when a child is finally fitted with a hearing aid or is implanted with a cochlear implant, that he or she will be able to hear with no difficulties whatsoever and that no additional support is necessary. But unfortunately, this isn't the case because this is when all the hardest work actually begins. A hearing loss can influence a child's speech, language and academic success. So we are involved with the initial assessment of the hearing loss, fitting of the appropriate technology and we also make the necessary referrals. We work together with the child's family when we decide on the type of hearing aid that we will fit to these children and we base our decisions on the type of hearing loss, the degree of the hearing loss the child has, the child's lifestyle and also his listening needs. But often for children with a severe to profound hearing loss, hearing aids are not good enough. So we have to refer the children for a cochlear implant. A cochlear implant is an electronic medical device that actually replaces the damaged inner ear. So if we look at hearing loss, the ears are only the way into the brain. So having a hearing loss is almost like having a doorway problem. So it's really important to get kids diagnosed with hearing loss as soon as possible so we can get their brains activated with sound. Once a parent suspects that the child has a hearing loss, their first port of call is the Ear Institute. We have a very close relationship with the audiologists at the Ear Institute. We are part of the Ear Institute's Cochlear Implant Pediatric Unit. Here at the Educlex we also offer mapping sessions. We connect the cochlear implant to the computer and we've got specific software to program the cochlear implant and to set it according to the child's specific level and needs. Uh, uh, e, e. They will see Cecile for the the assessment and then for the rehabilitation and the therapy after implantation or even before implantation if necessary. The therapy that I give differ from the rest of the therapists that um, see the children at the school. First of all, the children are not in the school, so they have to come from outside and we make appointments for them. Um, to come weekly for therapy. So I teach them how to learn and how to listen um, and yeah, how to use the devices. And I work a lot with the parents. The parents also sit in, um, in the sessions. When I first came here, I really didn't know what to do. And you know, Anyasha was hardly saying anything, he was hardly speaking. And in these last three years, we've made such, such a, a lot of progress and I can see that the speech is progressing and um, the teachers that I've inter interacted with and all the team here, the speech therapy department, they've been very supportive. Uh, why does she have the umbrella? To support the umbrella to pull. Yes, you pull it. And then? The, the mommy went inside. Yes, she's going outside. Who's there? Who Who are you? I'm my frog. Are you the frog? Frog, you need to help me. Okay, so at the start of every term we take in the kids' hearing aids, cochlear implants and then we bring them up here to audiology and then we test the devices. So after the hearing aids have been tested, we either send them back to the children or if we find a problem, we send them to HAS where they get repaired. Okay, the main reason for me to test the cochlear implants and the hearing aid is for better hearing. When the children arrive in class, I'll take the hearing aid and start by checking the batteries, the tubes, if they're not hard or broken, the mold also if it's not hard or broken, because if one of these things is not right, it can disturb their hearing. And after that, when everything is fine, I'll put in the FM to connect them to our Inspiro the Roger, to, to uh, this one, uh, mine and the teacher's one, for them to hear us well. Okay, usually when I come into class in the morning, I take my Inspira, there's a sync button on it. I just sync with the, with the sound field here, close to the board, then I'm in tune with the, with the sound field, and then at the back there's a wall pilot, where usually our hearing impaired when they enter the class, 
they usually uh, sync with the wall pilot there at the back. And then uh, sometimes if they forget, then I can also come back and I sync with my Inspiro if I see they're not, not getting me in there yet. So basically they, it, the Inspiro is connected to the FM and then they just peep it into your FM and then it, it helps you to hear more clearly. It's a nice thing for me as a teacher because uh, my voice is never strained, I don't have to scream and shout in the classroom and it's not only beneficial for our hearing impaired children, it's also good for our normal hearing kids here in class. When he uses the Inspiro, it sounds a lot better than when they talk normally. So I, I don't know what I've been doing previously, I've, I've taught at other schools as well but I'm, I'm telling you we are quite spoiled with this, with this technology here. Yeah. We've been very privileged to have Eduplex design their classrooms specifically for their hearing impaired children and it benefits the normal hearing children as well. The classrooms are hexagonally designed and we also have mats on the walls from floor to ceiling which helps with the noise reverberation. Tutorials are sessions with the hearing impaired learners that are one-on-one -on -one or small little groups such as this in which we get a chance to either pre-teach a lesson that is coming up or reteach a lesson that has already happened. What makes this so special is the kids aren't scared to ask questions, they, they risk a little bit more, and it empowers them to, in class, also participate because they feel that I know what's going on. And then we also have individual conversations where the teacher and the child is in a room and we have a conversation. We can either use a book or an activity uh, where we just discuss things that happens and we follow the child that gives us the lead. The second thing we have is um, small groups where we have more than one um, hearing impaired child in our group and there we teach them to have a normal dialogue. Our role as assistants is to help the educators in any way possible that we're assigned to, like administration, taking classes, extra support to learners during the school, during the day, um, making sure the technology in the classroom that's used to assist the hearing impaired learners is functioning correctly. My role as a deaf support teacher is an extension of the classroom. So what I do is I go into the classes and then I can sometimes do some pre-teaching. That is when I take the child and I work on a new concept that the teacher is going to do the following day. So that when the child comes into the classroom, he knows exactly what's going to be taught and it makes it easier for him and it helps his self-esteem to know something already and to know what the teacher is talking about. It can also be some post-teaching, that a concept that he was really struggling with that I can reteach in the office on a one-to-one -one basis so that he, can, he or she can really achieve their full potential at the end of the day. It's actually fantastic that we as a therapist can be on the school property when it comes to um, working together as a team with the educator. It's very easy to just quickly pop into the classroom and, and ask the teacher, are there any specific difficulties that the child with the hearing loss is struggling with in the class? So this is where the speech language therapist comes in. And she basically, especially um, with the youngest children, focuses very much on developing listening skills and spoken language. And she specifically has a family-centered approach. So she works with the parents in her therapy as well to kind of guide them and to coach them on how to interact with their children on a daily basis and how she can use routines to create a language-rich environment at home. Are you being serious? No. No! What am I being? Um, sarcasm. Yes! Sarcastic! <laughs> Boom! That is what I'm talking about. As the children start moving into the early primary school years and into the intermediate phase, the focus of the therapists um, basically changes to a more academic one to um, maintain focus in a mainstream classroom environment and inclusive education. In 2002, at the opening of the Educlex Preschool, former President Nelson Mandela actually said that what we're doing here is turning tragedy into triumph and I fully believe that with all my heart. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, 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 Sorry,
Bye. Bye. <laughs>